Well, so dear, and welcome back. Uh, and very good morning to all of you. So we are now ready uh, to take another lesson on how to model humanoid robot uh, now like specifically now like humanoid robot. Okay. So in that context, you know, we told you that um, what humanoid robot is. Humanoid robot is just like us in that <laughs> in that sense that they are as imprecise as we are but we are trying to make them intelligent as intelligent we are um, uh, to the corner to the uh, to that extent that we uh, consider ourselves as intelligent of course that's a huge task and we were nowhere near to that but that is our goal okay so in doing so uh, first and foremost thing is to develop a mathematical model which computer will understand uh, for that particular robot. Uh, okay, so in that regard, you know, we already we have told you using uh, divide and conquer, we have divided the entire complicated structure of the robot having so many uh, degrees of freedom, like 25 degrees of freedom, we have, um, we have classified them, okay. Uh, basically, we want to, to divide and conquer, okay, that uh, head, for head zone, we will make a model, for arm zone, we will make a model, left and uh, uh, left arm and right arm, and then for leg, we will make another model separately. So in that way, we were actually proceeding in my earlier lecture. Today, we are going to do with, um, today we are going to do with, um, actually, um, we are going to do it leg okay and you see <coughs> uh, leg is it has two legs left and right and left okay and here you, if you see minutely here if you see minutely then what you will observe I will just um, that here is a inertial coordinate from somewhere uh, like in port Z axis okay. and uh, you the market here is one point where this and this this and this coordinate frames are attached they can describe different links uh, relation with respect to um, other link okay so and you know we do this thing in such a way that most of the dh parameters goes away at least for the beginning okay so following this uh, conception we are now in a position to same old story right so what we will have to do we will have to make a dh table okay very beautifully very correctly so this is our dh denoted heart involved table you prepare this table okay and uh, you need to very correctly prepare this table and you see what is the um, uh, the uh, twist angle? Go back here and see. So this is the left leg. Okay, we are talking about this is the Z axis, and this is the inertial coordinate frames Z axis. So somewhere I, I am I am putting that Z axis here also parallelly. Okay, this parallel to this. Okay, parallel to this. All kind of thing parallel to this. So this is the Z axis. So what is the angle between two successive z axis? You see, pi by two plus pi by four equals to two pi plus pi equal to three pi by four. So this is the twist angle. Now. What will be the um, sign look from, I am looking from here, okay, and this Z axis has flipped to this position in a clockwise direction. So what will be the sign? It will be negative, so, and see, we have this parameter, this uh, twist angle. And we have attached coordinate frame in such a way that all other parameters initially will go away. So they are nowhere, and then of course this is uh, by construction. 
minus pi by 2 plus theta 1 left leg and to be frank enough to make simplification we can call it theta 1 ok so and then again recall so this is our uh, uh, the transformation matrix coming from we have deduced it right from the basic principle I am time and again telling initial videos you need to see that how uh, we have deduced it hmm? and we are now using it ok so to calculate link 1 relation with respect to 0 relation ok which will be a function of theta 1 is equals to just take all the parameters and put it here so cos theta 1 so this guy has to be here minus sign so we have so this is 0 so this is 0 ok similarly this corresponding to this will be just as simple as this similarly third row with this parameter will be like this you verify ok take a notebook and you do it yourself and then uh, last row is 0, 0, 0, 1 so that is all so you have received the kinematic relation or model of uh, coordinate frame 1 with respect to 0 similar is the case 2 with respect to 1 you follow the same principle use the same matrix and deduce this so in this process you can uh, actually calculate transformation matrix of link 3 with respect to 2, 4 with respect to 3, 5 with respect to 4, 6 with respect to 5 and then the entire leg model is this ok, 6 link with respect to 0 will be just multiply this matrices which are each matrix is of only one um, variable is there ok and that is the way you do it now coming back to our um, skeleton of uh, now what we have done so far for head we have a kinematic relation for arm we have kinematic relation and now for leg also you can get a kinematic relation and all these kinematic relations are with respect uh, will be valid only for arm or leg or head for which it has been developed ok what if I want now robot as a whole should move and for that I need a kinematic relation okay, then we will have to do something very simple uh, but understanding this is important so this um, the uh, divide and conquer uh, this chain okay, arm chain head chain they are very very important but they will be able to for example uh, you, I am uh, programming now now is sitting uh, on a chair like this and with right hand it is uh, following some trajectory and I am making a program for that. So only arm uh, kinematic relation will be used for this or if arm is in this position, a home position and I want now should only work then of course the model is valid ok now we will be able to work by energizing the leg um, kinematic relation. Similarly, if I want now only to um, move it, its head, okay, pitch or tilt and then stand, okay, or yaw, whatever you call. So this only two motion, then it's fine, only head uh, kinematic relation is good enough. But what if I want now to move um, uh, or now to move its all limbs, then I need additional coordinate frame which we call uh, home coordinate frame or natural coordinate frame and that coordinate frame is attached uh, in case of now at the torso ok or waist inside inside is body ok and making z axis along this this is x and y ok so <coughs> what you will have to do additionally additionally I will have to now um, uh, make kinematic relation with respect to this coordinate frame ok so what I will do I will figure out the um, with respect to home say a right arm ok so what I will have to do you know so this 
immediately write up and you have already this relation already you have deduced okay so this is concatenation of uh, five matrices as you know so additionally i will have to make another transformation and that transformation will have no this with respect to this you can see okay um, right hand right say oops anyway so this is the orientation okay so this is say uh, inner cell coordinate from the arm and this is the orientation this is the position vector it has orientation and it has position so what this um, will look like this matrix you have already deduced this matrix and this matrix will have things like that zero one and then okay got it so this thing will be given you will have to measure that okay what is x axis what is y axis what is z axis and how that coordinate frame is oriented with respect to this coordinate frame that means uh, angle between x y and z so so that you will know this you will know this so this will be a constant transformation where there is no variable at all okay because this is a geometric uh, transformation so you have all the relations with respect to this coordinate frame now i have attached a home coordinate frame or inertial coordinate frame universal here now i have arms uh, description with respect to this similarly uh, left arms description left arms description with respect to this similarly uh, you see um, where is that zero coordinate frame okay here it is so it will have all this kinematic relation okay so hand leg head okay head where is the zero coordinate frame here so here it is attached so by modifying already reduced um uh, kinematic relation modifying means what is simply multiplying by a constant matrix which manufacturer again will give or you can we have a scale and you can from the um, anatomy of the robot structure this is the structure given so you can get all this orientation and position okay so that only things you have to note and that will enable the robot to have description of all the joint angles with respect to a universal coordinate frame let us call it uh, home coordinate frame now you can swing hands you can different way leg while swinging the hand now can also uh, actually move the head okay so leg uh, hand head all movements simultaneously can be done by the computer we will learn of course but this is the basic one uh, that with respect to when all the jo joints have a description kinematic description with respect to the home coordinate frame which is attached at the torso for the you see this is what i am talking about okay so at the torso this is where the robot has this coordinate frame attached so with respect to this coordinate frame when all the joint um, uh, description is deduced now you have a complete picture of now okay a complete picture of now model uh, <coughs> as far as the um, forward kinematics is concerned forward kinematics is the most basic one which we are going to study and uh, surprisingly um as you can see that um they are exactly same um only thing is that uh, the there is no um intersecting three intersecting axis uh, kind of thing like that they are exactly same as 
uh, industrial robot, okay, as far as forward kinematics is concerned. Okay, now in this lecture, uh, we will uh, study some more, I will give you more information about now, now robot, and then next, next what problem can arise, you see, you can do brainstorming and you can now tell me what would be the problem, huh? either it is now robot or it is Bexar type of robot, okay. So, uh, there, uh, three, any three successive joint axes are not intersecting. That means, Piper's recommendation is violated. Why violated? Because to give the aesthetic design, um, make that aesthetic design like human, okay. And this is not an industrial robot. So, in doing so, you have done one bad thing. What is that bad thing? By this time you know that no more the inverse kinematics, analytical inverse kinematics solution is guaranteed. I am not telling that it is not possible. For example, in Baxter, it is still possible if you make some assumption, they are not realistic assumption. That means, what are the assumptions? Assumptions are make some small um, uh, offset between two coordinate frames, which is separated by a small distance, assume it to be zero. So forcibly you are making three joint axis intersecting at a point and then close form kinematic solution, close form kinematic solution will be guaranteed. So you must understand close form kinematic solution meaning, right? I try to tell you close form kinematic solution. So that is your solution <coughs> that is theta 1 say theta i will be equals to a and 2 y i x i like that okay they are in general form i am writing okay they could be 8 and 2 uh, y1 uh, x1 that means y1 by x1 okay uh, then y2 x2 all kind of thing is possible uh, right so this is close form solution close form solution right once these values are inputted you get momentarily the joint. But another solution, so this, this is not guaranteed anymore for, and that's the only uh, difference we are going to, in subsequent lectures, we will pick up this issue and we will tell you that what to do if this is a situation which is a real situation for all humanoid robots, which is not the case for any of the industrial robots. Because industrial robots, they are very, very, um, good guys, they always follow Piper's recommendation so that close form kinematic solution like this is guaranteed. Uh, what is, uh, you know, what is the fun with close form kinematic solution? Robot being a, um, robot being a um, real time system, if I ask the robot to do some operation, it has to do quickly, okay, and in doing so, it has to solve inverse kinematics, plan trajectory, and then uh, reach there, make a motion, okay. So, if we can save time in computing the inverse kinematic solution, then it becomes, uh, it is desirable, at least for those days when the computation power were uh, not so great. And in a, and a numerical solution means iterative, okay. So, for given x and y, so I don't know theta, huh? so iteratively there are some methods we will discuss. Uh, very in an elaborated way we will discuss, but we will discuss it for um, simple two thrilling manipulated robot, which can be extended because we will write program, I will I'll ask you to write program in a vector form so that it can easily be extended to now or um, vector type of robot for solving inverse kinematics. So that's the, uh, that's the fact which you should know. So after this is, uh, everybody is with me that by attaching a coordinate frame at the torso, now computer is able to know to move hand, leg, uh, uh, how, to, how to move hands and legs by getting solution from forward convection. Okay. Now this is all about staying at a single point, okay, um, computer can know. But what if I want that on a floor, 
I will recommend go there okay, in a two, um, on a 2D flat surface on a room or on a room for example floor of a room go to that particular destination and fetch that object if this kind of command I give then now need to solve um, additional problem it need to have a, a fixed coordinate frame okay fixed coordinate frame say here and always it need to figure out that um, what is what is the home position with respect to fixed position coordinate frame okay and that how it can know it can know by computing some algorithms you know simultaneous localization and mapping so with respect to this target it should know this is a fixed point fixed coordinate frame it should know where it is and uh, localization where it's called local and mapping means it has to map that you have asked it to go on a floor so it has to have a visual perception that where it is currently placed where you have asked it to go and accordingly you will um, solve the um, slum problem and trajectory suppose from here you have asked it to go here so normally it will try to plan a uh, straight line type of path but if you place some obstacle so it may have to plan different path so whatever it is it has to first plan a path and then uh, plan a trajectory of the home um, this coordinate frame okay what is the trajectory and then it will be able to reach over there by uh, by controlling the trajectory following algorithm okay so that's the another problem which requires to be solved all simultaneous localization and mapping okay that's the way robot will be able to move from one place to another place in a controlled way so I think um, this is some of the basic things now you know that how to um, calculate uh, either leg model, arm model or head model and then uh, uh, that uh, how to know how to integrate all of them by placing a coordinate frame at the torso okay and these values are extremely important because and they will be given by the manufacturer because they, they are the DH parameters, okay? Uh, link length, etc., etc., offset, okay? And I will conclude my lecture by telling something about, uh, you see, now you have the skeleton model, right? And uh, <coughs> now you need to have also sensors, like human, we have several sensors, visual sensor, you see tactile sensor, if some, somebody is touching, I can see, okay? And then, um, an internal, so many internal sensors we have, and our automatic control, intelligent control is all um, by collecting information from the sensors. So sensors play a very important role uh, in case of robot, as well as the way, of course, um, it is in robot is much more simpler, but for any intelligent creature, sensors are must to have intelligent control. Okay, so also now has actuator. You see, actuator in robotics term, it means uh, motion creator. In case of human, what is our actuator? Can anybody tell me? Muscle. Muscle is making, you see, a skeleton is there. Skeleton cannot move of its own. So muscles has to move. They are called actuator. In case of robot, uh, there are different types of actuators, pneumatic, hydraulic, okay, electro-pneumatic, all kind of thing. But in case of now, actuator is motor only maximum cordless goes dc motors okay it's known well known for precision and reliability so this kind of motor is there at every joint we have as many joints are there that many motors are there okay so you cannot uh, you have seen that motors also when i was demonstrating and uh, making now on a flat table it will different that video and you can see you can uh, see the motors at least externally now it has several sensors uh, tactile sensors 
tactile sensors are those sensors which are activated by touch, actual touch. So, uh, you see, if I put my hand touch uh, on now, now will sense that somebody is touching. And then uh, if I use my choreograph software, that when sensor signal from this address, and every sensor has an address, of this address is on, then take this action, which you have programmed. Suppose if I just uh, touch Nawal's head and ask now to stand up, and in choreograph I have written that program by again energizing all the forward kinematic solution, okay, corresponding to stand up position. I need to, this is a very interesting uh, exercise, interesting exercise for student that how you can make a gesture, particular gesture, it's a design, an art, okay, uh, and then those gestures can be accomplished by moving motors, okay, following the forward kinematics relation, okay, theta, actually, theta is your, uh, who is accomplished theta rotation? It's a motor, okay. We'll talk about in control how it is done. But sensors are very important. Sensors tell, uh, tells you that what type of gesture to make at what time. So it has tactile sensor, it has two speakers here, okay. So now talks, prompts, and share his story, play music, okay. It has a battery here, okay. Now is free to navigate without being connected to an aware, okay. Uh, if you want, then, so this is also uh, prehensial uh, hands with a sensor, okay. So to grasp some items and to work on object exchange and turn, I think this kind of sensor you can use. At the foot also you have tactile sensor, bumper sensor, okay. So very important that uh, now gets information from, especially when walking it is required, okay. So apart from that, it has microphone. Okay, four microphones are there. Now detects the origin of the sound and understand what they say. And then it has eyelids, okay. Now uses color code to express emotion. Hmm? And all kinds of things, color code, eh? uh, eyelids are there. But uh, by mistake, nobody should uh, know that these are not the, these are not the uh, eyes. No cameras are there. Cameras, instead cameras are here. Two cameras. Now recognize pre-recorded face, pictures. So this is using this camera, using this sensor, we can make a uh, program and we can make now intelligent. Then we have sonar also, okay. Detects whether something stands closely in front of it or not. You can know by sensor. Then Wi-Fi connection you can make. So basically now has uh, four uh, two cameras, four microphones, ten tactile, uh, tactile sensors. There are various kinds, kinds of transducer which can be used for tactile sensor. Piezoelectric uh, sensor, then um, rotary potentiometer, potentiometric type, uh, all kind of thing, okay. Uh, who, those transducers which are activated by touch. Activated means what? They will issue some electrical signal when actual touch will be there. And those signal, whether it has been issued or not, will tell the state of the particular sensor and you can program it uh, using those inputs, okay. Now can be programmed to respond to movement, speech, facial recognition, etc., etc. More sensor now has more smarter way it can interact with us. And uh, these are the very interesting things and you can have many sensors, you can uh, design your own robot once you know how actually now is um, more okay and um, so how sensors are integrated uh, and how um, now can be controlled that we will talk um, and I, I think after this that talk will be relevant I will talk uh, in the next class till then stay safe and uh, work on all this uh, small, small assignments, uh, self-assigned assignments you can make. What is that assignment? Make a correct um, in the kinematic model for hand, left hand, for right hand, for left leg, for right leg, and then attach a coordinate sensor at torso, and then uh, get description of all the joints, 25 joints which you have. Show that in a coordinated fashion, you can write programs um, 
please remember that fundamental is this uh, for our kinematics and why we are teaching all these things to you so that we want that you guys can design software okay uh, without knowing of course these things you cannot design software choreographer like software is a team effort uh, likes a lot of uh, huge lines of course but at the kernel this fundamental uh, forward kinematics inverse kinematics strategy planning has to be there with this note i conclude